we've just been trying to keep the factories operating the last couple of years has been a very difficult thing. Um, and it's like supply chain interruptions have been severe, yeah. uh, like extremely severe. So it has required uh, all of our attention just to uh, keep the factories going, not not to think of like like at the end of it, like the super hard part for a car company is like how do you get revenue above cost so you don't go bankrupt. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's not really like a you know as long as as long as our demand is enough to absorb the production. Uh, and, and we have production enough to cover our fixed expenses, then we're in an okay spot. Sure. But, but I'm thinking about like downtime. If these cars are traveling 400,000 miles, sitting in someone's driveway, they're not going to collect 400,000 miles before the paint's kind of having issues. I imagine that increasing the utilization of the existing fleet, obviously full self-driving does that, but up until then, if we have car sharing installed to increase utilization, increase the number of miles on these vehicles, it's a good thing for the world. I, I, I said that this is that 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 is a that, that's a high class problem that that uh, you know um, the the thing that like car companies you should think of car companies as like at any given point they desperately want to go bankrupt. Okay, that a car company is desperately trying to go bankrupt at any given point in time. Um, so uh, in in order to have that not be the case, you have to. How the fact the factories have to have to be active. Otherwise, uh, you have parts piling up in warehouses all over all around the world, and you can't ship the. You, but but if, you, if you're missing any parts, you can't finish the car and ship it. Um, so the past two years have been an absolute nightmare of supply chain interruptions, one thing after another, mm -hmm. yeah. and we're not out of it yet. Of uh, so. Um, So we, that that's uh, that's overwhelmingly our concern is how do we keep the factories operating so we can pay people and not go bankrupt, and then everything else is like nice to have, but um, you know, uh, we, you know. Yes. E e even recently, like the the COVID shutdowns in China were very very difficult. You guys actually do so well that we all think of you as a tech company first, which has like, you know, like, like Apple, right? They make hardware, but they've mm -hmm. spent way more money on software, which I, I'd even say I've got the perception sometimes that it's like, oh yeah, things are, they've got this just huge stack of bandwidth, but like, you're right, the amount of money in hardware moving through this place is. The, the, like this fa factory is losing insane money right now because we can't make it, we, we, like, because we, um, like we should be uh, outputting a lot more cars from this factory versus a very puny amount of cars. Um, but we had challenges with the 4680 ramp mm -hmm. and with the structural pack ramp. And, the, and then ironically, the tooling, because we, 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 were, we were able to do 2170 cells, uh, but the tooling necessary for making 2170 variant cars was stuck in China. So we had this Shanghai factory uh, in op. Uh, we've got the the tooling to enable this factory stuck in port in China yep. with no one to actually move it, um, th which basically then caused this factory's production ramp to, to be very tiny. Uh, th now this is all gonna get fixed real fast, you know, but it requires a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it will take, like I said, it'll take more effort to get the production, get this factory to high volume production than it took to build it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And the same is true of Berlin. Berlin's in a slightly better position because uh, Berlin started off with the 2170 mm -hmm. uh, style and, and did not have the 4680 instructional pack risk. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, but both Berlin and Austin factories are gigantic money furnaces right now. Yeah. Okay, there should be like a giant roaring sound, which is the sound of money <laughs> on fire. <laughs> Okay, that's it's what. Dumpster fire, right? Dumpster in the fire. Yeah. Bigger than a dumpster. Dumpster is too small. <laughs> uh, it, it, gigafactory level, like, like Berlin and Austin are losing billions of dollars right now. Because there's a ton of expense and, and, and hardly any output. Mm -hmm. So having get, getting Berlin and Austin functional and getting Shanghai back, back in the saddle fully mm -hmm. are overwhelmingly our concerns. Uh, everything else is a yeah. very small thing. 
<laughs> basically. Understanding that this is not an immediate concern, but does a Plaid Model 3 make sense to you <laughs> in your mind? Uh, no. <laughs> Could the weight even handle that power strain? Um, like its potential? We're trying to re reduce complexity. Uh, <laughs> 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 Not increase it. Got it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and we're our own worst enemy in, in adding complexity. Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the Model S and X are, we're doing them not because they are huge money owners, but really for uh, sentimental reasons. Mm. They're, like, they're at, at uh, full output, we're talking about 100,000 cars a year for uh, S and X. But 3 and Y will do, I don't know, 2 million plus. Mm -hmm. So it's like 10X the, you know, more or more, frankly. I think 3 and Y could probably do 3 or 4 million. And, and S and X will top out at 100,000. 100, Just because the affordability yep. drops off exponentially with price. So as, yeah. as price rises, you, you basically, the number of people that can afford an S or an X, it, it, it doesn't drop by a little, it drops by an order of magnitude. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So like every, a doubling of the price will drop the affordability by a factor of 10. Mm. As a rough rule of thumb. Is there any additional thing that we can continue to do? I mean, we we tried to yeah, help us with the, the solar taxing. I mean, it's probably hard even, like, I'm, like, asking you, like, how can we help? It's kind of a weird, it feels like a weird question, but. Well, I, I mean, the public support is certainly appreciated. Um, and uh, shooting down FUD is, is, is always very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you know, and, and there's an argument for maybe we should advertise because the, you know, you know the, the sort of traditional media will not run negative pieces about automotive because automotive is like one of the biggest, if not the biggest, advertisers in their in their, in their paper. So, mm -hmm. they like the ads could literally be nothing, but it would be better because of the articles. You bought their to be bad. Yes, <laughs> like this is like like so so Tesla is like basically free game, whereas uh, it's safe to say that uh, if they run some negative piece about General Motors right next to a General Motors ad. General Motors uh, marketing exec is going to call them up and say, um, why did you do that? <laughs> do you want me to pull it now? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah. yeah, your budget uh, next year, we'll, we'll be spending nothing with your publication next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is, and, and they don't have to do that because uh, they, they, they know. So mm -hmm. there is tacit, there's a tacit understanding. Uh, that you don't run hit pieces on your major advertisers. Yeah, it's bad for business. Yeah, <laughs> right. And and and, and then people's like, oh, there's uh, don't worry, there's a there's a fire, there's a tri trying wall between the business and the, the editorial. I'm like, yeah, but they also know who's paying their salary. Okay, uh -huh. they don't need like uh, they they they're not they're not idiots. Same way there's a firewall between me and my boss. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. They just they just know. Don't go there. <laughs> That's what they know. Um, but t t they can go to, they can tr trash Tesla because Tesla doesn't advertise. So that's the issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so maybe we should advertise and at least like, you know, uh, I don't know, it's, it's sort of, it doesn't feel right, but mm -hmm. that is a, something we could do. I mean, our goal right now is to get to zero interventions in point-to-point in -point drives in cities. Yeah. Um, so the, the polish is less important than, than solving for zero intervention point-to-point -point drives in cities. Um, the sheer amount of work required to do this boggles the mind. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to the best of my knowledge, I asked the team, like, do we know of anyone who is even trying to pull in our footsteps? We don't know of anyone. Maybe there is someone, but the, the I mean, I, I've seen a lot of tough te technology problems and, and solving real-world AI such that a car can drive itself. It's one of the hardest problems I've ever seen. Mm, and, and, it, and it is way harder than I originally thought, by far. Um, so. What would you say to the people that have said, for several years, you've said it'll be this year, it'll be next year. What would you say to those people? It'll be this year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> Two Put that out. That'd be a great quote for six months. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's still tracking for this year. But as far as the, um, I'm going more for like the. Uh, yeah, why, why did I? Why was I overly optimistic in the past? Yeah. Uh, I did not understand the just the, the scope of the problem. And you feel you do now? Yeah. Um, I mean the. 
it, it, it's it's so it it's very easy to get get close to it working and where it feels like it's just you know all well, right there just a little <laughs> further you know um and it's like the, the you know the donkey with the carrot over over head it's like oh, that's right just keep you know <laughs> just pull, pull the cart a bit further and faster pull the cart faster maybe that cat's going to come closer um and so the and and frankly um having radar and ultrasonics uh was a mistake radar especially because radar uh it allows you to get close to solving it and solve it most of the time, except when you can't lock the radar and, and the, the visual neural net. Like, radar, radar and vision disagree, which one is right. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you basically have to get rid of the radar. Um, and once we got rid of the radar, which by the way, was initially strongly opposed by the autopilot team, and now nobody wants the radar back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is that right? Uh, yeah. So I, I have to lay down the law and say, like, that radar's coming out, man. Yeah. Uh, it, it is, it, we, you can't, that radar is a crutch, and if you're carrying that crutch, you can't run. So, uh, it, it just, it, it, the it, radar would, 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 it just, the signal, the, the radar was contributing more noise than signal at the end of the day. Uh, uh, so, it's not that it wasn't create, contributing signal, but it was, the, it, it was more noise than signal. Uh -huh. And so, that's, that's the, it had to be removed. The, the streets were designed for uh, eyes and mm -hmm. biological neural nets. That's what the entire road system was designed for. So therefore, it makes perfect sense, frankly, that um, cameras and digital neural nets uh, are required to solve self-driving. You basically have to re repeat what the humans do, okay. but in silicon. Uh, and, and nothing else will actually solve it. Hmm. So. I mean, Tesla's actually I mean, going to be in a situation where Tesla has a self-driving solution and no one else is even close, not even for five years. Hmm. Licensing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. sure. Absolutely. We're, we're not going to stop people from doing it. Um, but the, 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 they will, it, it, <laughs> it, it will need to slap them in the face, like, bah, bah. Not like, hey, we think, like, it has to be taking sales away from them. Oh, it'll take sales away from Uber. It'll take sales away yeah. from everything. So it'll be very clear and, once and it's it, actually delivered. It'll be very clear that this is the way. Everyone will know in that moment, within a month, this is the way. If they don't already know. I mean, anyone who has this, the, the that you guys have the beta, you've you've seen the trajectory of improvement. Yep. Yeah. It's very clearly going to uh, achieve full self driving. Yep. Yeah. It's just a question that there's some debate about when. When, yeah. But 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 if you say like what is the rate of improvement per unit time, yeah. you can say this is clearly gonna get to a point which is where it's much safer than human. Yeah. Um well, and, and it's not far. Is is how do those you know, basically there is that point where you cross and it feels as if we are kind of slowing the progression and I want to know that it crosses. No. Oh, okay. So that the 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 thing that's that's like sort of hard to appreciate from sort of outside the company is that uh, we'll re-architect the neural net, like for the thousandth time, and and uh, um, I mean, man, that's like the, the the things that I like they take up the most amount of brain space for me are working on self-driving um, and getting Starship to orbit. To the outside, it seems like two steps forward, two steps back, um, mm -hmm. and so it feels like 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 the improvement is flat. But actually, mm -hmm. a whole shit ton of uh, like we just re with the neural net. So it's, uh, now, now it, 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 in the limit, as these neural nets get very good, they will be much, much better than a human. So the, it, it will be able to do, to drive better than James Bond could possibly drive. <laughs> um, fortunately, the threshold for uh, succeeding is just being better than a human. And humans have uh, really a lot of latency in general. <laughs> so <laughs> so this, it's like not actually all that high of a bar when, when you realize it. It's sort of like you think of like elevator operators back in the day, mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, you can be an expert elevator operator, but you got to fl flip that relay and get the and get the elevator and the floor to line up exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, you're not going to succeed nearly as much as the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so now now anymore, if you did have an elevator operator with a big big relay switch, you'd think that's pretty backwards, um, and and you'd really prefer to have a button. Mm -hmm. That's how it will be with 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 uh, autopilot. Uh -huh. I mean, we're going to get a lot of of 
sort of complaints and fight and whatnot from competitors about autopilot because they have no answer to it. Mm. Yeah, so, um, and they're not like thrilled about the idea of like licensing it from Tesla. <laughs> That's not like, oh yeah, let's give our competitor a ton of money. Yeah. It's not the number one, their number one objective. Because so. the value is just ridiculous. Yes. The value yeah. of a fully self-driving car is yeah. like we've never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you think everyone undervalues uh, self-driving? It seems like the world doesn't really understand the value of it. Why is that? Well, it, it, it's sort of like... I think if someone has never seen a unicorn or something, uh, you know, they're like, hasn't happened like yet. unicorns don't exist. <clears throat> you know, it's just a horse with a horn on its head. Uh, <laughs> no, no big it, deal. It's a magical creature. For, you know, that's what it, basically self-driving sounds like some magical uh, fiction thing mm -hmm. to most people uh, until you actually use it and then yeah. it blows your mind. Yeah. So now it wouldn't be that hard to use it they could just like talk to someone who's in the beta program and it's in the car right car out. sharing <laughs> yeah seriously yeah. They, it wouldn't be that hard to figure it out but yeah. they're not trying yeah. um, and and so like they're all just thinking that no uh, self-driving is like is very far away slash they have invested in some solution that that will solve it which we want no one is pursuing a, a pure vision AI approach to, to this which also requires like a massive amount of labeling mm -hmm. um, like custom auto labeling software, uh, you know, a, a massive array of training computers. It's not just the, the in-car software, it's all of the, the training and labeling and debugging mm -hmm. software. So yeah. We all wrote us, we wrote all that too. You're not gonna be, you're gonna get no praise for the whatever 90% of people you save, and you're gonna be sued by 10% of people you don't. <laughs> so it's a thankless task, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, but at the end of the day, I think we just have to put this before a jury and say, listen, you got to believe statistics here, uh, yeah. because it's like if if this is like, you know, I think highway safety is like an order of magnitude safer yeah. than people, and it's like it's like these are not small numbers here, you know. You just say objectively, how many crashes were there? Oh, it's ten yeah. times fewer. Okay, yeah. so like the, then the company that massively reduces uh, deaths and, and accidents should not be penalized for the few that do occur. That's like, that would be super because messed up. Because until full autonomy safety, is, it's going to happen. Yep. I mean, even even with full autonomy, there's still like going to be a non-zero number of things. Because this, you're... A lot like, will fall. And... Well, like, you're still interacting with, uh, you know, like, the, it's going to take a long time before the, the fleet is autonomous. So, like, when the mm -hmm. fleet is autonomous, let's say, at that point, the problem, like, accidents will be insanely rare. Yes. Like, 100 times less or more than what they are right now. Yep. Like, you just have to literally leap into the traffic with no chance of the car it's like, <laughs> like it would actually like practically a suicide you know um so uh when when all the cars are autonomous but for a long time uh there will be autonomous cars mixed in with 99 point something percent non-autonomous cars and then uh that that means people will do you know will swerve across traffic like so you go down a road and somebody you know with an, an, an high-speed non-divided road and and a truck just drives into you mm -hmm. yep. okay like uh what are you supposed to do Can't avoid um yeah um and uh but i mean i think people also don't realize like just how many people are dying out there from uh you know basically drivers falling asleep or whatever i mean mm -hmm. jay's wife was killed by a truck Driver that fell asleep. I forgot about that. She was on a bike. Bicycle, right? She was on a bike. Yeah. Yes. And, and a, a, oh God, a truck driver fell asleep. Yeah. The, the truck veered across the road and ran her over. It killed yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And if that car, if that truck had had a uh, autopilot, uh, it would have stayed in lane, <sighs> and it would not. And should be alive today. Wow. The irony of that. Yeah. So, anyway, like either way, we're just gonna keep doing it. Um, it's uh, you know. Thank the, you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gotta do it.